Well, good morning, everyone. Just wanted to uh, come on here today, and uh, we've we've been uh, typing a lot of stuff in Facebook uh, this week. And uh, I know some of you don't get a chance to read that. Uh, some of you uh, prefer to watch videos, and, and, and sometimes uh, it's just a whole lot easier for me to come on here to the hearer and kind of explain some of this stuff rather than a bunch of typesets of uh, things that uh, I've learned and uh, am trying to uh, share with everyone. Um, so anyhow, I just wanted to basically, um, let me just make sure everything's working here. It looks like it is. Um, and uh, all right, I think I got everything working and let me get our transition here. All right, so I wanted to talk about a few things this morning. Again, this is somewhat of a reiteration um, of what, what I've talked about throughout the week. And what I'd like to do is kind of go over some of these things and uh, kind of give give an overview and, and maybe some uh, more in-depth explanation and, and more in a, a, a framed situation. And I'm going to call this today Steeped in Tradition. Uh, and whose gospel are we reading when we read the New Testament? Um, we have the first four, what we call the gospels, but yet Paul... Um, who says he was born out of the proper sequence or whatever. Um, anyhow, he comes on scene, and uh, even his conversion is unbelievable. And uh, so with that this morning, we want to we get right on into, uh, Paul says to hold the traditions he taught and obey his gospel. And uh, you, can, you can find that in 2 Thessalonians, and I'll, I'll take you to that real quick, just to, and we're not going to do this the whole time, but 2 Thessalonians, let's go uh, 2 and 14, uh, just to show you, I um, kind of summarized that. Uh, so when you look here, 2 and 14, to this he called through our gospel, now this is Paul supposedly talking, or the, it's written of Paul. Uh, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what he is talking about here is to this he called you through our gospel. Paul is making it his gospel. And if you know anything about the letters, he's speaking directly to this, uh, this group of people that he has taught, discipled uh, in one way or the other. Um, and so he is telling them through our gospel. So Paul has his own gospel, and I know that uh, some may think, well, this is, this is, he's preaching the gospel of Jesus, um, but, but I will assure you today that, uh, and let me just show you here, if you were to do a search, and by the way, just in full um, uh, openness, I will tell you that I have searched these scriptures. I have been uh, led by the Holy Ghost. And when I say led by the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost has brought these scriptures to my attention um, as, as God would give me these, these revelations. And it's not a revelation out of the, out of the blue. It's, it's to see what these words are actually meaning and, and to pull those things and put them in the proper perspective and not being falsely given. So there, as we've talked about before, is there are uh, interwoven truths throughout this Bible, but there is also many deceptions and many characters who are trying to pull you with that evil um, deception away from who Jesus is. They don't want you to follow Jesus. And uh, if, if they can get you to follow man, then, then that is exactly not following Jesus. So when you look at that, so here we are. Um, again, like I said, all these things I've come upon, and then later uh, I've done like a search that I just did. This Actually, this is the first search uh, 
in this order that I've ever done, uh, Jesus and Paul contradictions. And if you'll notice here, there are tons, tons of these certain people um, that, that have already studied this subject. They, they go out and, and, and you can go on uh, YouTube or wherever you want, Google, whatever, and you could find the eye at odds with the teachings of Jesus. And you will find in these things that uh, there is a whole different gospel. And Paul was not accepted as, as he wanted to be by the Council of Jerusalem. Okay, neither by the apostles of Jesus. And, and you say, well, where, where is that at? And we will, we will go here uh, to, let's see, I think it's in 2 Corinthians. Let me see here. I think around chapter 9, uh, verse 2. And, and, and what he says, um, let's see here, For I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia. Uh, let's see if that's right. Uh, first Corinthians, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought that was something off there. So let's go to first Corinthians. Okay. And we're going to go nine to two, nine and two. Yeah. Okay. So first Corinthians nine and two. And let's just see here. It, Paul surrenders his rights. It says up here, he says, so number two, verse two, he says, if to others, I am not an apostle. At least I am to you, for you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. So what Paul is saying here and what he's alluding to is that he was not widely accepted into the church, as, as many call it, or the assembly of those who follow Jesus. He was not widely accepted. And, and we will get more into that as, as we move forward here. But he made his own following, and it is clear he used the name of Jesus to lure and then instituted his own gospel based on his vision. What was his vision? Okay, this is his conversion that we read in the book of Acts that he tells us about. This would totally explain why he never referenced Jesus on his works, his miracles, his parables. This was not something that Paul has in any of his letters and and you can you can go and read over and over and over again you can do google searches or whatever um i find it my my most of my memory of scripture is throughout the king james version so when i do a search i just put kjv behind what i know if remembered in the scripture and that usually gets me right where i need to be if I'm looking for a certain uh, thing in the scripture. So anyhow, this, this shows that his, his references are not there by the sayings or commands of Jesus and the family connections or the bloodline of David. He does not even link Jesus with his bloodline to David, to King David, all the way back to Adam. Uh, so in any of those things, he refers not to any of these. If, if you as you read, you will find that, that Paul does not give a whole lot of credit in specific to anything Jesus particularly has done. He mainly says that I'm a slave to Jesus. I am a servant to Jesus. Okay. Now, we, we all know that some people's Jesus is not the Jesus that you and I see. Uh, you will find that steeped in Catholic tradition. Uh, it is well known and well documented that uh, many of these evangelical and these, these uh, well known um, writers and content uh, producers of, of YouTube and of these churches, more notoriably, notably named people that have come out and said that the Jesus of the Catholic. And, and you can look this up again. You can do your own research. The Jesus of the Catholic is not the Jesus of the rest of the religion, religious world. So they even differentiate between the Catholic and themselves. So that, that's kind of where, where we're at with some of these things today. So as we go through, you see his narrative was in the beginning of his letters. Uh, begin with, I'm a slave, a servant, or uh, of or to Jesus Christ. The same front and same facade that churches often use today. 
They call themselves, they have, they have moved away from Jesus. They, they're they're um, moving away from Jesus is because the gospel has been, uh, in our world, so tainted that people run from churches today. They don't want to be affiliated. So you have to say, hey, we are a charismatic church. Hey, we, we're not a denomination. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tie myself to that denomination or that denomination. Oh, wait, you're Pentecostal. Do y'all handle snakes? Because of all these things that people say and, and, and that they have heard, they, they've shy away from these things. So what they have done is, is put new names out for their, for their, um, buildings, uh, and, and one of the most predominant is called New Life. New Life is, is, is kind of a, a middle of the road and, and hey, it's new and it's life that, that, you know, make it sound exciting, right? Um, you have Church of Jesus, you got Baptist Methodist, um, Sacred Heart, St. John, St. Whatever you want to call it. There are so many. I, I, I just kind of, kind of just, challenge you to go on Google and just do a local search and say Catholic churches near me or something like that. You will, you will see a thunderous <laughs> um, amount of things. Let's, let's see here. Uh, let me just show you real quick. Uh, So if I was to do that, you would see all kinds of, of churches uh, all over the place. As you can see here, you, you, will, you will find tons of, of, of religious organizations all throughout your areas. And uh, so anyhow, that's what we have today. We are fully saturated with religion and no reason uh, that that it's not surprising I should say that people veer away from religion because it is confusing confusing and uh, you know we've all heard God's not the author of confusion and 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 this is exactly when you get into the religious world when you're you're looking at a church, you're finding all these various um, ways and gospels, uh, and 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 many of them have made their own gospel, even aside and added to and subtracted from even the pages that that many follow today. Um, they'll have their own. That's why you have a Methodist. That's why you have a Baptist. That's why you have um, of sister churches of of Catholic. And and as we've talked about last week, when you when you look at the, the original writings and, and you look at the um, how the Catholic has has predominantly hidden the Word of God for so many years from so many and then finally you you end up having the Reformation and you had each each one of these people that have walked off and, and made a Methodist church made later later on a, a Pentecostal and what they've done was was pulled different things out and said we're going to stand on these principles these are the things now it, back to the scripture back to what we call the Bible how do you think that so many could be derived and and pulled away and and made their own little uh pocket of beliefs if this thing wasn't so confusing. It is so confusing. And, and I believe that it's meant to be because the only the true of heart, those that lean on the spirit of Christ is going to be able to see the, the, the truth weaved in and out and the deception to those that are going to not be pure with the Lord. And I believe that's the way things are happening today. And if you want a pure heart, you want to serve God, and your heart is, is, is open to Him and not filtered through religion, God will pull these things out for you and show you what I'm seeing today, what He eventually showed me because my eyes began to be open to it. My heart and my mind said, hey, Lord, 
This, this is not right. These things are very troubling that is in the so-called churches that even we called the closest to what we thought the Bible meant. And, and when God began to just blatantly show me and, and man really is the one that showed me by their own actions how they have veered so far away. And, and as I began to see these things, I began to look at the Bible a whole lot differently than what I had been taught by the so-called religious sects. And with this, I have seen that the Bible in itself is not all the Word of God, is not all true to what God spoke. It is many different deceptions throughout that will pull you away from Jesus. And that is exactly what we're talking about today. Clement of Rome, A.D. 99, and you can look this up. You can, you can go out and research this for yourself. But they have found, it. Let, like, let's, let's go to Galatians. Let's run over to Galatians here, 2 and 11. And just, just to get the, pick it up here. Uh, Paul opposes Peter. Now, we're, we're going to, again, we're, we'll, we'll come back a little bit into this, but I just want to get this up front. It says, but when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, okay, so we've got these little pockets of believers now, right? So James, who is the brother of Jesus, and, and now he, Paul is opposing Peter, who he's called Cephas. Uh, here we are. He said, but when they came, he drew back. So it says, basically, for before certain men, verse 12, came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. He's talking about Peter eating with uh, James's uh, people and eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. So you've still had these, these Jews that, that came to Jesus, all right? They came to, to be followers of Jesus, and we, we find this very prevalent in Acts 15. So you have these pockets of believers. Some say, oh, we're going to keep the law, but we believe in Jesus. So what, what they did was not, not separated from the law, but kept the ordinances and things that, that uh, were known to them from the law of Abraham. They were not convinced of the, the uh, way that Jesus taught yet, but they believed in Jesus and the Bible says that many believe because they saw the miracles that he did. Okay, so when you look at that, um, you're seeing here, and okay, let's go to 13. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, If you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? So here we are. We have Paul inserting himself. Now we all know that most of us are taught that if you're going to get credit, someone else should give that credit for you. But no, we have Paul here in his own letters puffing himself up over and over and over and over again. Now, let's keep with the subject here. I'm not trying to throw anything off here, but the point is, is you have this guy that is constantly lifting himself up, and every once in a while trickles in Jesus, saying that he's a follower of Jesus, and, and, and now he's rebuking Peter, who the Lord said, which I'm not saying Peter could not be at a fault here. I'm not, I'm not even uh, alluding to that. But the point is, is that by, the own, by his own words, Paul expects to be highly respected of these people that he writes letters to, such as the Corinthians, the, the Corinth, um, uh, Thessalonica, these, these folks there, and, and Timothy, and how he expects to be lifted up. And when you look at where he talks about the bishops and the elders, and he begins to hierarchical uh, uh, step ladders of, of who should be praised and who should be honored and all these things. These are things that, that you see that Paul himself is being hypocritical in his own teachings. 
So as he begins to puff himself up here and, and comes against Peter, um, you, you find that, that and, and this is one-sided because, you know, the, the canonization of, of what books got to come into uh, what we call the Bible today, what what books that were allowed and others that were not allowed and sayings that were allowed and not allowed to be in this, in the, the binds of our, our, what we call the Bible. Um, but anyhow, we can find some of these things uh, in Clement of Rome, A.D. 99. And again, you can look this up. This is a writing of how Peter responded to Paul's rebuke. And, and so as, as they have only allowed Paul's side of this story, you can find other writings. Peter is saying Paul expects people to believe him by a vision. Now understand that this, Paul was not well accepted in 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 uh, what he claimed so these folks jesus's brother james and 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 those folks there so peter is saying paul expects people to believe him by a vision of jesus opposed to peter's own eyewitness account he heard by jesus own mouth with his own ears okay and this was the saying, this is the writing that, that they did not put in here. And this is, I'm going to read this again. Please go look this stuff up. It will benefit you to understand and see the larger picture of what this Bible means to you and, and, and how much of it is, is, is skewed and scanted, uh, slanted by, by others for you to be brought in to a framework under man and not under our Lord Jesus Christ. And, and supposedly, and I say it that way, Peter said, if you were not opposed to me, you would not accuse me and revile the truth proclaimed by me in order that I may not be believed when I state that I myself have heard with my own ears from the Lord, as if I were evidently a person that was condemned and in bad repute. And this is from the Clementine homilies. All right, these writings were removed from print and rewritten by Rufinus to deflect Paul's name. So they tried to actually get rid of all the copies that, that the sayings were in. Um, so there has been some major, major, major uh, deletions and, and, and people trying to get rid to, to contain the gospel as they want you to know it. And this is not some uh, far-fetched idea. We all know that, that uh, from, from the time that Jesus was born, you read the Gospels, you see that, that Herod wanted to, to snuff Jesus out. You, you find that back to Moses. They wanted to kill the male Hebrew children uh, so that the, the, the God of Israel was not proclaimed. You see this throughout the, the generations and the history of, of, of God's people. And you will find that this is the very same thing that has happened by this gospel, by this Bible, and these writings that we barely have today. All right? So, Revelations 2 and 9. I want to I wanna go Revelations 2 and 9. And I want to see show you, and, and I, I apologize, I think uh, jumping all over here, but this is actually a narrative here that I'm trying to bring forward. Um, so when, when you look here, Revelation is speaking of people just like Paul, most successfully redefining what Jesus himself taught. And Jesus is talking about the elect and, and, and of Jesus and, and they, these that claim to be the elect of Jesus, and they are not. And when you look at uh, two uh, chapters 2 and 3, the letters of the churches, you will find where Jesus is telling John, and these are the words of Jesus, and basically he talks about from the synagogue of Satan, these people are coming. And this is, this is basically a Pharisaical reference of Pharisee, okay? And, and Paul states himself that he and his father are, were, are Pharisees. Um, and, and in these, these letters, it talks about that, that in Satan, on Satan's throne, 
and where Satan dwells. And, and, and as you look there, you can see sacrifice to idols and, 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 and sexual immorality. All these things were happening. Who was this happening to? Is this about the heathen? Is this about people that don't know God? No, this is happening amongst these people who are supposed to know Jesus, who are supposed to be followers of Jesus. But again, you have all these made up areas here, and this thing was rampant. You had Paul, who was the most successful, and that's why people are following Paul today because he ran the most successful campaign for his followers, okay? And, and, and it, it tells us in there that, behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you that during this time, and Paul was alive when Jesus was around, uh, so when we go here, I'm going to go to 26, and we're going to start out here, I believe, at 11. No, we'll go to 9. So let's go 26 and 9 here. And Paul says, I myself was convinced. And he's talking to, uh, I believe it's King Agrippa here. I believe this is his testimony. Uh, if not, he does talk to King Agrippa. Yes, he is talking to um, King Agrippa. So verse 9, he says, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things in opposing the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, who was Paul convinced of or by in this situation? Who convinced Paul is my question. See, there, there are a lot of, of, of dark and empty areas here that we're not told um, or filled in by what was happening and, and who convinced Paul. Okay, and I did so in Jerusalem, verse 10. I not only locked up many of the saints in prison after receiving authority. Well, he received authority, which means he must have made a request. All right, after receiving authority from the chief priest. But when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in all the synagogues and tried to make them blaspheme. And in raging fury against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. So what was Paul saying? He even hunted those down in raging fury that fled their own country. He punished them often. He locked them up in prison. He consented them to death. Remember Stephen, who was put to death, was stoned, who the scripture said that this was a just man of God, most excellent and full of the Holy Spirit. Opposing the name of Jesus at every turn, Paul says, caused them to blaspheme the name of Jesus, stating that Jesus appeared to him and caused him to be blind. This is the Paul we're talking about. Notice this would have been the first time we ever hear Jesus using fear and harm to convert anyone. See, Jesus was the healer. Jesus was the one that was called to raise the dead. Jesus was the one who was yelled out to, to calm the storm and to save me, Lord, save us, Lord. And, and, and this was the savior of the world. Amen. This was the, the king of kings. This was the, uh, the merciful. And, and, and in the parables, you see that Jesus uh, showed himself to be merciful. Amen. Uh, so we have no account of Paul invoking the name of Jesus in his few healings that were mentioned in the book of Acts. Okay. Uh, was it real? Or did we have one of those Benny Hinn fake miracle uh, setups, you know, where they go talk to the people and they'll pick them out and they'll have them come up in a wheelchair and act like they, they can't walk. And then all of a sudden they rise out of the wheelchair and, well, praise God. And uh, I've never been able to walk. And, and later on, people, people investigate and they find out that this man was able to walk and it was just a ruse. And all these people begin to take out their pocketbooks and their wallets and give money because they wanted to be a part of something good. These were, uh, extreme deception and even if the healings 
were real. We know that the Bible said that the devil himself will come as an angel of light. We know that God will someday send strong delusion that they would believe a lie. How can you be convinced to believe a lie? Did you read Revelation to where the the uh, the wounded uh, beast or the man was wounded, the Antichrist, and 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 was was brought back to life again, rose back up from the dead? You think that was Jesus in loving healing? No, it wasn't. It was power given to those people, and power is is given to these deceptors deceivers that that are out there and 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 you you've got black magic you've got all these things and if you think that spirit world isn't real it is very real today it is very real um and, and so they can mimic those things and and through the evil one and there are so many holes in 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 paul's stories and no credible proof his murderous gang were, were the only adequate um they're not adequate, but, but the only people that Paul stated himself didn't see Jesus as, as he began to uh, say that Jesus called out to him and, 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 and he was off, thrown off his horse or whatever and, and, and cast to the ground and, and, and uh, lost his sight and was blinded and, and how Jesus began to speak with him. He said that the, his, his own murderous gang um, didn't see it, but they heard it. They heard a voice is what he said. And, and so uh, this story, you know, the Bible says that let every word be established by two or three witnesses. But see, the problem here, um, and, and, and no, no wonder that the disciples did not believe Paul because he had no evidence. He had no witnesses. And, and so this was based off of just what he was to say. Um, does this story pass muster to you? It doesn't to me. And even Peter said that things Paul has said was hard to be understood, uh, in my opinion, meaning unbelievable. Um, again, you, you have to look at this as, as, as what it's meant to be. Uh, you find that 2 Peter 3 and 16, which the book itself is, is claimed to be a fake book. Um, and there are several in there that, that they say that are fake writings. Um, and you can go look at that as well. So I'm telling you folks that, that you have got to lean on the spirit of Jesus Christ as you go through these. And, and, and if you don't, you're, you're going to be swept away by every wind of doctrine that man has to, to offer. And, and I will tell you today, there are going to be uh, fake miracles and, and you say, well, if, what do you mean fake miracles? Uh, you know, somebody got healed. I've been healed. But it wasn't by the man. It wasn't by the, the, the assembly of people. It wasn't linked to a denomination. It wasn't linked to a group of people. It was linked by the name of Jesus that, that I was healed. Amen. It wasn't linked to man, but it was through my own faith in Christ Jesus, my Lord, that things begin to happen. Amen. And, 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 and healing took place. It had nothing to do with man. And if you look, you'll see that in the, in the scriptures, you will see that the apostles, the true apostles, would never take credit. And they would, people would bow down to them and they say, get up. We're just men like you. We're just of like compassions. And, and we did nothing, but we give all glory to the name of Jesus. You don't find that in Paul. You don't find that in the, the few miracles that you hear, you read um, that Paul had performed or that was performed when uh, uh, attributed to him. You will not find Paul praising Jesus and giving him the credit for it. Um, you, you, you may look at the, the writings where uh, Paul and Silas was in jail. You, you may bring that up. That, that, that is a different thing. That, that was not a miracle that Paul invoked himself. I'm talking about those types of miracles that, that were happening with the apostles. Amen. When Jesus left and said that you, you will be able to use my name and my name. Amen. Will you be able to, to get devils and demons out? Oh, so one of the, one of the odd things that I want to go back to 
Um, again, where we talked about where Paul brags about withstanding Peter to his face, claimed to be the first authority to bring his doctrine to the Gentiles. Now, here is one of the things that, that stuck out to me, and it always has, is the fact that Jesus, in Acts 10 and 9, had already spoke to Peter uh, with the four-footed beast coming down in a vision. And he had already told Peter, and he showed Peter, that what I have cleaned, don't call unclean. Because the, 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 the vision was telling Peter, you've got to eat these, these uh, animals that the Jews were, were taught not to even touch, the fowls of the air and the, the, uh, the, these, these animals that were not kosher. And, and the, the, the Spirit said to eat those, and, and Peter said, I'll not eat them. And, and Jesus said, what I have cleaned, don't you say that it's unclean. So Jesus was conditioning Peter to accept the Gentiles that Jesus was to save. And this was what was happening through that. So when you look at that, excuse me, um, my, my GoPro, it's, it, it gets hot and just shuts off and I'm not happy with that. But uh, that's just what we have. Um, I did not do a good job on that. So, all right, anyhow, Let's get back there. So when you look at that, let me make sure I get back to the right thing here. Apologize. So Paul brags about was standing Peter to his face. And back back to Acts 10, where where Jesus already began working on Peter and told him to not call the things uh, unclean that God cleaned, and he was prepping him for the Gentiles. And, and Jesus told Peter that he was to bring the message forth. He had the keys. And, and, and you will find that, that Peter uh, brought this message to the, the, um, um, to the Italians, a band of the Italians. And, and this is where Peter brought that message. And they were Gentiles, and this did happen the way Jesus said it would. But Paul takes on himself and says, I'm the one that's going to bring uh, the, the, the word to the Gentiles. And so that was not the case. Um, now, he took it on, on himself. He says through a vision of Jesus, and he would be the one to do so. Um, now, again, we find in, a, in an area here where Paul says that he disappeared for three years before he came back and went to Jerusalem. Okay, this was before Acts 15. And uh, so it was then that from the dark side, I see the plan to become friends by deception, knowing that violence would never stamp out the Jesus doctrine. Remember, he was saying he blasphemed, he, he put people in prison, he consented to their death. And, 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 but that was, that never worked. That, that, that ploy never worked because he would have been chasing them to his death because no one was going to give up the faith of Jesus by that, those methods. So when he had left for three years and nothing is said of what he did, um, I think he went off to Arabia. Um, and, and so knowing this again, that he would never stamp out the Jesus doctrine with mere threats and even death, that this doctrine would flourish, but rather to beguile them as only the serpent in chief could do, to gain trust and pollute the true gospel of Jesus by claiming a false revelation from Jesus. This, my friend, is the ploy. This is the Antichrist. The doctrine of Paul is not the gospel of Jesus. It is not the gospel of Jesus. Um, and I want to want to go through a little bit here, and I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to we're going to kind of put it on high speed here. But the doctrine of Paul is not the gospel of Jesus. So many other areas to be viewed. 
uh, letters to the Corinthians, letters Thessalonia, uh, Galatians, Timothy's, uh, his own disciple, not espoused to Jesus, but Paul's own disciples. And that's what it's about here. 1 John 4, 1 through 3, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Well, this is back when this was written. All right? This is when Paul was alive. The fact is, Paul never talks about Jesus in the flesh. Many believe Paul did not truly believe James or Peter of their accounts of Jesus. How is this logical? Why would Paul never refer to Jesus by any miracles or his life on earth at all? Why did he not? He assuredly was told by James and Peter, who were, according to the book of Acts, were in great conversation. He went and spent, I believe, a week or two weeks with Peter. He had acquaintance with James. And we know in Acts 15 that he had uh, rubbed shoulders with James uh, as, and, and Peter through the council. Okay, so let's go back and see. See, one of, one of the big things that, that people say in the church world that are on this thing that we were talking about and the whole uh, Paul and uh, versus Jesus and stuff, they want to say that, that Paul is all about grace. They want to say that Paul um, was, was not about um, ordinances, which I find false. I am not on their, in their camp with them. I do not believe the same reasons why Paul was an imposter. I feel that Paul was every bit about that pharisaical ordinances. He was more so. That is why the churches today uh, have altars, okay? Because Paul brought those things back in, because he was a Pharisee, because he brought in that law and that hierarchy of the bishops and elders and all these things and the, the, how, how we, we have those things which Jesus emphatically said, in my kingdom, this will not happen. And he wasn't talking about on the other side of heaven. He was talking about then because it was referred to and the questions was asked of who is the greatest. Is Paul or is John uh, do you love John more or whatever? And, and they were trying to compare themselves among themselves. And Jesus said, this is not so in my kingdom. This is not so in my teachings. Okay. So what was the most simple of commands of Jesus? See, Paul, when you go to Corinthians and you go to all these other things, he lays out a whole series of, of, of church bound and, and, and pharisaical and scribes that Jesus condemned in verse 20 in chapter 23 of Matthew. Read through there. Hypocrites, woe unto you. Hypocrites, woe unto you. Hypocrites, woe unto you. Extreme danger to you, he's saying. Woe. When you go to Revelation and you see the angel say, woe, 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 that is not something that's a happy sign. When Jesus says, woe unto you, it's not a happy sign for the Pharisees. Luke 10, 25, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. This was the response from the lawyer to Jesus when he asked Jesus, what can I do to be saved? And uh, Jesus said, well, what, what are the first two commandments? And this is exactly what the lawyer said. And Jesus said, that's correct. And we go to Matthew 22 and 40. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. They're all hung on these two commandments. If you are loving God with all your being, and if you are loving your neighbor as yourself, you are in very good shape with the Lord. Now the books of James 1, 2, and 3 John, Revelation chapter 2 and 3 depict the condition of gathering followers and the source by which they come, they come, depicting the very teachings and deceptions by Paul. You could align those things up by what Paul himself spoke. Acts 15 and 20, James and Peter, backed by the council of Jerusalem, was Gentiles should not be worried with the law or ordinances. Only not drink blood of sacrifices, refrain from sexual immorality, and abstain from the pollution of idols. And you will find that in the Revelation chapter 2 and 3 to the churches, where it talks exactly about the blood sacrifices, the sexual immorality, and abstaining from the pollution of idols. Churches today practice almost all the law, old law ordinances in one fashion or another. To name a few, um, the altars, Jesus was the final sacrifice. If his sacrifice was not good enough, and you have something more to sacrifice than what Jesus did. Now, this is not talking about picking up your cross. That is a personal thing. That is not before some church and and underneath some man uh, to prove your faithfulness to God to a man. That is not to gain yourself into the ladder, corporate ladder of a church hierarchy. You've got baptism. No matter via Trinity or oneness name. See, these altars play on a, on a personal sacrifice before men in authority. Baptism. Again, these are ordinances that were done away by Jesus himself. You say, well, wasn't Jesus baptized? Yes, but you're not understanding that Jesus was still under the law physically. And in order for him to be heard, he could not be someone that was just rejecting the law. But he built on it because he made the law. But there was a transition happening here. That grace, that unmerited favor that Jesus brought and died once and for all, behold, Jesus, who taketh away the sins of the world, was what John the Baptist said. And that is who Jesus is today. The churches have brought in tithing. They have moved tithing over. When tithing was never meant but for a particular group of people, even within the Israelites, the Jews. And this was just a a niche of people. And there were certain ways to do it, and it was never about monetary coin, money. Um, Never cited for any Gentile to do. Even Paul never said anything about that. Um, But churches today, to gain buildings, pay their people, Filthy lucre. They claim that you will get a blessing if you do it from God, and you will be cursed by God if you don't. Dress codes. You know, Paul liked to get into, this is where, again, these these are derived from from, uh, letters, and and these were stretched and pulled. And and, and they, they go back to the, in the name of holiness, which Jesus never spoke of these things in his words. When these people said, what must I do to be saved? From John 3, 1 through 5 to Nicodemus, when he replied to the the lawyer, uh, and, 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 and these two commands, 
depend all the law and the prophets. We read it, Matthew 22 and 40. We, we also looked at Luke 10 and 25. Well, what do you do? If you got these, you're doing okay. Jesus did not add these great burdens to man, in particular, like the scribes and Pharisees. Jesus railed against them. He said, you put heavy burdens, you bind men with heavy burdens on their shoulders that they can't even serve God because of all the little things. He said, you swallow a whole camel, but you strain at a gnat. And that's what Jesus thought about these hypocrites. And Paul talks about hair and men's being short, women's long and their covering and all these things mentioned never by Jesus. Never was it uh, spoke of by others. Wouldn't you think that somebody would have confirmed with Paul on, on, on the council and said, hey, you know what? You got some things right there because Jesus did talk about that. I remember him saying that. No, 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 no. No, you didn't hear any of that. You know why? Because it didn't exist. These are far-fetched far -fetched and stretched from commandments. They're pulled from the old law. They're, they're interweaved and, 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 and in some cases very delicately spliced together to make you believe that you are under that law. Again, Jesus never alluded to continuing on the law of Moses, nor that of the fake pharisaical teachings. He did not incorporate man to perform your completeness of salvation as the Catholic does. You know, you got to get confession. You know, you got to do Hail Marys. You know, if that priest doesn't allow you to go to heaven, you're not going to heaven. And they base this off a of frivolous un understanding of Jesus' words that we have penned in the Bible. And, and it makes you wonder how much of this is skewed to their framework. Because when you see that they have added, there's no way Jesus taught this. No way Jesus said this. But they put the letters in red, saying that Jesus said, whoever sins you forgive will be forgiven, and whosoever sins you retain will be retained. And I, I said that on the last video. And that's not true. Because Jesus would not come to reinstitute man back into between you and salvation. He took the ordinances as you've seen, when, when, when Jesus died, the, the, the curtain was ripped in half of the holiest of holies in the tabernacle. Whoosh! No more do you need to go to man to find access to Jesus Christ, our God of our hope today. He did not incorporate man back into salvation he removed man from the equation to be saved, period. And that's all I have today. And I hope that you will go and study this. You will pray. You will seek God, not man. Seek God. These idols, these people that will sit there and tell you that you must go to church to be saved are lying to you. They're deceiving you. You do not have to go to church to be saved. My family went to a gathering today and I have no problem with them going to a gathering uh, called a church. Um, I really have no problem. They know why they're going there. They're not going there to be fed by God. They're going there to fellowship with some of our good friends and God bless them and I appreciate the work that they're doing. Their heart is pure and in doing what they're doing. Um, I don't hate people. I don't hate church people. I don't have any problem if that's, that's a, a social need that you have. But what I am teaching, what I'm preaching, what I'm giving and sharing to you today from God, from my heart, is that man is not 
your authority. Jesus Christ and him only. Keep my commandments if you love me, Jesus said. Don't listen to me. Don't be held accountable to me. Don't find favor with me. Link to God. And if you find favor with God through the name of Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, ultimate sacrifice, where you're never, all you have to do is pick up your cross daily. You pick up your cross and follow Jesus. And you love God with all your being. And you treat and love your neighbor as yourself. You, my friend, are on your way to heaven. And you will be so much better for it. Go in peace today, I pray. In Jesus' name, we love y'all. And we'll talk at you again sometime soon.